Greetings and welcome back to the Home Slice. I'm here again with my daughter Mara. Can I say hi? Um, and I'm going to do a unique test today. For those of you who have followed my testing, I just finished a, a, a little bit of a chop tournament. And, and in that chop tournament, I did three episodes where I just did a whole bunch of axes against each other. And this Vetterling's axe ended up winning. But I realized that I haven't really compared this Vetterling's axe against my Condor Scout axe. And I thought it might be time that we bring in the old Fiskars X7. I know the controversies have been much covered about whether these wooden handled traditional axes are better or these Fiskars technologically advanced but cheaply manufactured axes are better. I've heard lots of talk about it. I remember the Wrangler Star channel, he used to really make fun of these guys. And there's been a lot, a lot. So I don't want to add necessarily more drama to the conversation. But what I have never seen is I've never seen anybody compare these styles of hatchets against one another in a way that was actually quantifiable. So today it's going to make my productivity on clearing these invasive plants off of this property a little bit more slow for today. But I'm actually going to measure the penetration. So I'm going to get a similar angle, similar chop strength, and I'm going to take multiple depth measurements. So I'll take the pencil and mark each axe. And then I've actually got a tape measure with me and we'll take, I don't know how many, five to 10 measurements of each ax of how deep it penetrates. The reason why is because your productivity with an ax depends on how far you can penetrate. I've just swung these at about a medium velocity and this Fiskars ax is in about an inch. If it will punch into a thick tree like that about an inch, and you could properly aim an alternate cut at the opposite angle, it would cut out an inch deep V. Now, not deep this way, but deep in the two penetration angles. So the maximum amount of wood you can remove per every two strokes, if your aim is good, depends on the penetration. So I reckon if we take multiple penetration measurements, how deep these guys bite, and then we average them out, we could actually see which of these models of axes is actually more efficient for working. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to do all three axes at a time on one tree at a time at a relatively fixed thickness. That's because if you chop into a wide tree like this, you've got compression on all sides and the axe won't sink as deep. So I can't chop one of these into a three inch thick tree and then chop another one of these into a good old 11 or 12 inch thick tree like this and expect that the penetration characteristics will be the same because there'll be more fighting against it. So each time I'll do one of each of them on the same tree, take measurements, and then at the end we'll average them out and we'll sort of declare a winner. Some notes to keep in mind is that this Fiskars axe is about oh, just over a foot long with the handle and blade together. This Vetterling's axe is probably somewhere in the vicinity of like 11 inches, so it's about an inch shorter. And this Condor axe is probably somewhere in the vicinity of 10 inches. So if the numbers show that the penetration is slightly less on the Condor axe, which is a little bit lighter and a little bit smaller, we'll probably count that as a tie because th this will hit harder just because of the extra length and weight. And this will probably hit somewhere in the middle just because of the length and weight characteristics. Also interesting is that this Vetterling's axe has a pretty good initial kind of convex. It's a little bit thick, but it's not as bad as some that I've seen. This Condor, I've actually thinned out the convex on a belt sander. So it will be interesting to see if uh, like Outdoors 55 style of thinning out the bevel or the edge helps us here because I've, I've done that with this. I did that before Alex came out with his video, but it was awesome and you should check it out. Versus do you get better performance out of the straight V grind that you often get on one of these Fiskars X7 hatchets will be a really interesting thing. I.e. is it worth it to spend the money for convexing that's done pretty well? If you do it yourself, can you get better penetration out of the axe? Or is it better, bang for your buck, to go with one of these cheaply made hatchets that's basically V shaped and has very, very little convexing to it? On a final note, all of these have been sharpened the same way. I didn't do this microscopically fine edge and take a best measurement off it because I wanted today's test to be reflective of results that anybody could get 
at home. So I sharpen them all on diamond plates up to about 600 grit. From there, I smooth them out, smooth out the edges on a Spyderco Ultra Fine Ceramic. And then I took a Spyderco Fine Ceramic Rod and just did a little micro bevel to take burr off and then stropped them on leather, uh, first on chromium oxide and then uh, on, on diamond and then unloaded leather. So they're all shaving, they're all push cutting through phone book paper and that's sort of the level of sharpness that I'm at. I haven't taken best measurements because I wanted to keep this test kind of short and kind of a real world feel to it. Let's get into it. I'm tired. Me too. <laughs> too many bugs at my eyes. I know, it's so hot out here. Mm -hmm. I think we should go home and wash off the itchies, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the there's a lot of variation in the measurements. Did you notice anything interesting, Mara? You mm -hmm. notice the two, what, what do the two wood handle axes do? Tied. They very often tied on a lot of the medium thickness stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, other than that, I noticed that the Fiskars, the, with the orange handle, it penetrated pretty deep, pretty consistently on really big stuff. But on the smaller stuff, the Condor with a thinner profile um, tended to penetrate deeper. The Vetterlings is like kind of usually seemed like somewhere in between on, on most things, but it wasn't as good on the thinner stuff. And, but it did eject chips um, a little bit better, so I think it's just a little bit more thick on the convexing. Oh, and I did just one test where I hit twice, boom, boom, like in the same spot. And the thickness, the increasing thickness of the Fiskers and the Vetterlings seemed like it didn't cause them to penetrate much deeper. They both scored right about 50 millimeters, where the Condor that I had thinned out I hit twice in the same spot and because it's so thin it punched in to 70 millimeters which is a significant difference so i am not going to decide which one because they all performed well for different things i'm not going to decide which one's the winner now i'm not going to take the 30 different measurements we got and make them into averages now but i'll film a wrap up once i get home well guys here's all my data i think it should be pretty simple to understand these are the 10 chops that I did and the measurements of how deep they went in millimeters. Number 10 is the double chop. So you can see the numbers averaged at the bottom with the condor getting the best average. Now these percentage numbers in blue just under that just run the percentage off of the Fiskars X7, kind of using that as the control variable. And you can see that the small Vetterlings X did 2% less penetration and the Condor Scout did 4% more. But in reality, if you look at the numbers, it's only a millimeter or two. It's very, very small differences. 
Underneath of that, I took out the double chop so that you could see a single swing average penetration. And you can see that there, actually, the Fiskars is in the lead by just a little bit, but we're talking like less than a millimeter here. Underneath of that, I thought it would be interesting to run the length in inches. This is not the length of the whole handle, but the length from the end of your grip, because that's where the leverage really comes from to the top of the blade. So you can see that the Condor is 14% shorter than the Fiskars and the Vetterlings is 9% shorter. And underneath that, you've got the weight in grams. And you can see that the Vetterlings and the Fiskars are right there neck and neck, but the Condor is about 17% lighter. And then these ones at the bottom, I think are interesting measurements. This is how many millimeters of chop penetration you get for every inch of tool length. And underneath that, you've got how many grams of weight you're packing in your backpack per millimeter of chop penetration. So the millimeters per inch is better if it's a higher number and the grams per millimeter is better efficiency if it's a lower number. You want less pack weight um, and you want more penetration per inch of handle. In both cases, you see that the efficiency is highest with the smallest axe, the Condor Scout, which I find to be an interesting data point, and we'll have to compare that with future findings. All in all, these are three great tools, I would say. Very effective, very nice. The Fiskars X7 obviously is pretty nice utility per dollar, but it is interesting that with that thinned out profile, my Condor Scout at 14% shorter and 17% lighter was cutting an average of 4% better if you factor in the repeated strokes. So very, very good. I think I'm gonna have to declare the Condor Scout the winner for this test as all of the numbers are pretty close, but the Condor performs at around the same or maybe even slightly better performance overall with less pack weight and less length in inches to pack, which is greater efficiency. Can you say bye? Bye, guys. Um, let's see what else. Is this the point you can delete? Yeah. Ha, 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 ha.